Death Run TV, developed by LaserDog and published by Merge Games, is a hardcore twin-stick bullet hell shmup that's sure to scratch the itch of fans of fast-paced and frenetic action. Originally released in June 2021, this Unity-developed high-score focused roguelike is something I initially did pick up back when it first came out, but somehow it got stuck in my pile of shame for all that time up until recently, and I am glad I finally got around to it. As you can no doubt see, there's a real relentless pace to it all as you dispatch enemies, dodge bullets and rescue prisoners, trying to build up combos and raise your score in a full game show environment, and there's mechanics reminiscent of Robotron and Nex Machina. There's a large variety of weapons and perks available, and plenty of environmental traps to dodge alongside the enemies to dispatch as you complete wave after wave before having to GET TO THE JOB before the whole arena is destroyed. It keeps the pace going. There's also plenty of customization as you get to choose a perk and a starting weapon for each run, as well as having the ability to give your character a lovely wee makeover to fulfil all of your fantasies. The options and general accessibility are extended further, with a menu allowing you to implement all sorts of in-game tweaks to either make it slightly easier or indeed harder for yourself along the way, depending on your skill or how you're feeling. I'm not really a trophy hunter, but something I didn't realise until I started playing is that you can actually get the platinum for this in just a few hours, as most of the trophies do come for just finishing it and then veterans of the genre should be able to do the bare minimum of that relatively sharpish, with each individual successful playthrough being just about 20 minutes or so. The remaining trophies are locked behind some secrets which require you to do a few basic things in a certain order to unlock an extra area on the true ending, but there's an art to trying to get the highest score possible, and it's that hook that will keep you coming back time after time. A feature I've not really had the chance to check out, but which seems super cool, is some streaming integration in which the prisoners you rescue get named after the viewers of your stream, and also the audience get to vote on whether to give the player either power-ups or more obstacles. It's a pretty cool concept and something that definitely adds a little layer of extra depth. Ultimately, it's a game that's perfect for killing the occasional 20 minutes here or there, and even if it is relatively simple and not necessarily a top-tier title in the genre, it's still very fun and regularly available in sales for just a couple of pounds. Since it came from my pile of shame, and I'm sure that you've got a pile of shame of your own, maybe you do need to get through some things from that first. But if you ever do find yourself at a loose end, you can do a lot worse than giving this a go. Go check it out.